Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for being here. Um, first, I want to introduce myself. My name is Joe Forrest. I'm one of the uh, coordinators at the Santa Rosa Island Research Station. I'm a first generation college student, a military veteran, and uh, an alumni at CSUCI. I, uh, part of my experience, oh yeah, there we go. <laughs> Can you hear me? Part, yeah. part of my experience at CSUCI was very experiential. Um, I, I majored in environmental science and resource management. I think I see what, 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 what? And through that experiential degree, I uh, was exposed to the Santa Rosa Island Research Station. Um, at the Santa Rosa Island Research Station, uh, you know, we I had the opportunity to visit the island, and that experience really set my tra trajectory and really uh, established the career I wanted to be in. Right um, after I graduated, the uh, the, at that time, the acting director, uh, the assistant director and director of the station asked me to apply for a job position. I did, and now I'm here. So uh, kind of living proof this, that this experiential, um, you know, education through uh, ESRM and through CSUCI and through SRIRS, Santa Rosa Island Research Station, um, really uh, helps put students in positions they want to be in, right? Um, with that, I'm also the Marine Debris Grant Coordinator. So uh, the, uh, the art installation you saw over there is partly um, uh, part of what I do, right? Um, I take groups out, I take military veterans out, I take a lot of uh, people who have never even been out to the Channel Islands, um, to some of the most remote beaches on the Channel Islands and do marine debris removals. Um, everything you saw at the uh, art installation was marine debris we, we removed from the, uh, the Channel Islands. We removed almost 17,000 pounds of debris We've cataloged over 30,000 items that have been removed. And, uh, and uh, opportunities like this uh, really kind of show the, uh, the overlap between science, you know, basically hard work and, uh, you know, art, right? So art really provides that outreach opportunity to help uh, go beyond just, uh, not just, but go beyond the publications to um, really get in touch with the uh, you know, the folks that are just walking around here, right? A lot of people don't know the problems. It, no one would ever imagine that uh, the Channel Islands has, you know, 17,000 pounds of marine debris um, scattered across the shores, right? Um, I'm going to give up the mic now to Michaela. I've been blabbering on. Or, or to Matt, sorry. <laughs> Um, all right, my name is Matt Bermansky. I am a professor of art at California State University Channel Islands. Um, uh, good morning. Um, I want to recognize Carly Kennedy, Kenny Neal, and Connor Kelly, three amazing student artists that created the installation Help the Kelp that you all got to walk through and experience this morning. Um, they're amazing. Um, uh, <laughs> Art and science may seem like two very different disciplines, but in reality, they have a long history of collaboration. Artists and scientists have always been curious about the world around them, and they use their respective skills and methods to explore and understand it. In many ways, art and science are two sides of the same coin. They both seek to reveal the truth about the world and the human experience, albeit through very different means. Art often explores the emotional and the aesthetic aspects of the world, while science focuses on the um, empirical and analytical. But when combined, they can create something truly magical. The collaboration of art and science has led to some of the most groundbreaking discoveries and innovations in human history. From Leonardo da Vinci's anatomical drawings to the Hubble Space Telescope's breathtaking images of the universe. By working together, artists and scientists can push the boundaries of human knowledge and creativity to new heights. I'm proud to be a part of so many partners here today that support collaboration on a day celebrating collaboration. Thank you. All right, good morning, everybody. It is a pleasure to be here to help the kelp and protect our oceans. My name is Christy Kehoe, and I'm the California Regional Coordinator for the federal agency, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration's Marine Debris Program. Uh, my agency is the federal lead to address marine debris in the United States, and our mission is to prevent and address the adverse impacts of marine debris. And we do this through amazing partnerships and communities, many of which are on stage with me and, and in the crowd today. Um, and it's through that that we work through grant funding opportunities through outreach that we're able to have that impact. Um, in addition to that, I've had the really 
grand fortune of being out there in the Channel Islands and, and supporting California State University Channel Islands through a grant um, and helped monitor and remove uh, a lot of the debris that you see. And it's eye-opening, certainly eye-opening to be so far away, not see any humans and, and still have such a debris issue. Uh, I believe that this Help the Kelp uh, exhibit is a wonderful opportunity to showcase the real importance of marine debris as well as its value. Making progress on this issue, plastic pollution will, will take a collective and a collaborative uh, effort across all sectors, artists, scientists, private sector, nonprofit, industry, government. It's gonna take all of us working on this issue from all angles. And the No Marine Debris Program would like to thank the diverse set of partners here today and attendees for your interest and energy in this issue. Uh, with your help, I believe that California and the United States can remain a leader in addressing plastic waste reduction and keep our oceans uh, debris free. With that, I wanna thank you all again for joining us this morning and for the amazing organizers. Um, and I look forward to connecting with you today. Thank you. Hi everyone, um, thank you guys for having me today. Uh, my name is Michaela Miller and I'm the conservation manager at the National Marine Sanctuary Foundation. So the foundation is the official nonprofit partner for the federal marine sanctuary system. And we directly support programs and projects at individual sites across the entire sanctuary system, including Channel Islands. Um, our conservation work includes three main mission areas, wildlife conservation, habitat restoration, and marine debris removal including marine debris removal work here in the Channel Islands National Marine Sanctuary and National Park. Aside from that, I'm also a CSUCI alumni and first-generation college student. <laughs> and um, I was lucky enough to spend a lot of time at the Santa Rosa Island Research Station as an undergrad. Um, especially as a student, um, that's where I first started working on marine debris removal efforts, um, starting in like 2015 or so. So it's really cool to see this program grow and evolve since then. My experience at CSUCI and the Santa Rosa Island Research Station is what has guided my career and is a large part of why I'm now with the National Marine Sanctuary Foundation. So now at the foundation, I'm able to continue to work that, um, continue work on the same projects that began during my undergrad career um, at the Santa Rosa Island Research Station and also expand that across several other sanctuary sites. I'm very grateful for my experience at the Santa Rosa Island Research Station and for the opportunity to continue this work and collaborate with even more partners. So thank you for having me. Hi everyone. Uh, my name is JJ McLeod and I am the Director of Education here at the beautiful Santa Barbara Zoo. Uh, first, I just wanted to say how lucky we are at the zoo to have so many amazing partners um, to contribute to this wonderful uh, exhibit, Help the Kelp. Um, from these partners doing the boots on the ground conservation action and then us at the zoo folding it into our curriculum and interpretation. We see four to five hundred thousand guests a year and are able to teach them um, how to save that beautiful big blue across the street. Um, I'm here to tell you a little story about the impact and one of our education programs. We see 25,000 stu uh, school age students uh, through field trips between March and June, 20,000 of which are from Title I schools. And we have heard from their teachers that when they are bused in and get off the freeway, for many it's the first time that these school age kids are seeing the ocean for the very first time. So if we can just let that sink in a little bit and how profound that is to how we connect students to the ocean when they haven't even seen it. So we, here at the zoo together, all of us, we have the opportunity and the responsibility to teach them the importance of keeping the ocean clean and thriving. Help the Kelp was a perfect fit to do just that, and it's a great visual representation of what is in our ocean and an opportunity for all of our guests to help make changes. We all up here have a shared goal to grow future generations to be thoughtful, inclusive, and responsible members of our community. We are proud to be a part of that today and look forward to all the ways that this CSUCI partnership will have lasting effects in our, on our community and planet. Thank you. <laughs> 